Hello guys, it's Ademola from SPSSBoss.com. In this lecture, I'm going to be showing you how to create bar graphs in SPSS. Bar graphs or charts as they are called are simple graphs that can be used to visualize data in SPSS. The simple bar graphs as it's called, it's very simple and basic and it allows you to depict one variable or the relationship between two or more variables. Now to get the bar graphs, there are two ways you can get it in SPSS. You can go to Graph, Chart Builder, or go to graph, legacy dialog, and bar. There's no difference between the two, only that the chart builder allows you to build your chart properly and you can visualize what you're building. So we're going to use this option. You can explore this during your free time, but this is the most important one. Now you click OK. When you're here, you move in. This is the simple bar graphs. In the gallery, make sure you select the bar and move in the simple. So when you drag in the simple bar graph, then you can put in your categorical variable in the x-axis. In this simple bar graph, we're going to be looking at the relationship between gender and body max index. So we want to see if there's a difference in body mass index between male and female. So you drag in your gender, which is called sex here, put in the x-axis, and in your count, you're going to move in your dependent variable or the variable that you're using to differentiate between your two categories. So we put in the calculated BMI. Now you can see that the mean is specified here, but you can change it to median, you can change it to mode, you can change it to minimum, maximum. You can even select percentage greater than a particular BMI. So if you wanted to find out what percentage of your participants have BMI greater than 30, you can select percentage greater than 30 and that's going to show you. So if we select percentage here, set parameter to 30, click on continue, we'll be able to get BMI of the participant and don't forget to click on apply of the participant that is greater than 30. This is very flexible and allows you to compare a whole range of things. We're not going to go over everything. We're just going to go over the most important one and what most people would use, which is you get the mean. And in some cases, you just want to see the percentage greater or less than a particular value. So let's put it at mean. Now we can display error bar. Error bar shows you the level of uncertainty in your variable. Now confidential interval gives you the 95% confidence interval and that would show you if you were to do this for the entire population how high or how low will the difference in BMI be between male and female. You can also get the standard error which would be the value of uncertainty of the mean that you're using. Now let's use confidential interval first and then click on apply and then check this bar make sure so apply, click on apply. Once you've clicked on apply, now check this. It says sex, but you can change the label so you can change it to gender if you want. And you can sort by value of sort by label It's if it suits you. You can change the order so you can move male up and female down and click on apply. Always remember to click on apply when you make any changes. You can see the switch now. And in your Y axis, instead of putting the mean calculated BMI, you can change it to calculated body mass index or leave it the way it is. Now click on apply and then click on OK, then you should be able to get your result. You can close this window now. Now, as you can see that this is the calculated body mass index and you can see here clearly that male have higher body mass index compared to the female. Now the error bar is showing you that if this particular data set have 265 participants. This error by showing you that if we were to carry out this comparison between the entire population of male and female, we are likely to get somewhere between 29 and 27 for male and somewhere between, let's say this will be 21 and 24 for female. So the 95% confidential interval showing you that we are 95% confident that if we were to carry out this graph, if we were to depict the BMI of male and female for the entire population, the difference between them would be between here and here and between here and here. And that's the importance of your error bar. Now, what I would also like to show you is how to use the dialog. Go to graphs, legacy dialog, and bar. Now here, you can select simple, clustered, or stacked. Now we've gone over simple, so let's select simple now. And I'm just going to show you. Here, I calculated the percentage for male and female based on the BMI. 
what I can do here is just look at the number of male and female. So this time around, I'm not using any statistics. If you wanted to include the second one, you can select the BMI, which is your dependent variable. So you're comparing BMI between male and female, or just find out how many males and females do we have, which is the, one of the advantage of using the simple bar graphs as well. You can use it for basic descriptive. So just put the variable there and just click OK. And it will show you the number of male and the number of female. So here you can see that you have 125 females and 140 male because it's 265 in total for this data set. Now that's how to use the simple bar graph.